Hi everyone and welcome back to Scale Studio. Today we'll be finishing up the work on the main hull of the T14, besides the side skirts and slat armor, which will come in a later video. We're going to look at a bunch of cool techniques today, so let's get started. First thing we're going to do today is apply some anti-slip texture to the front plate. As far as I can tell, the Russians only applied it to this small section of the front. I'm going to be using VMS Holtex Air. They have a different type as well, but the texture is more coarse and would work better for Israeli vehicles, for example. To apply this stuff, you first want to use the cement, which is fairly easy to use. You just apply it to all the areas you want to have anti-slip, and it will self-level to some extent. Just don't put too much or too little on. It does take some trial and error to figure out how much you need, but as a rule of thumb, I try to apply enough that you can, can't see brush strokes, but it also doesn't flood the surface. Once you've applied cement to all the panels that you want to have anti-slip on, you should mask off the rest of the tank because the texture spray gets absolutely everywhere. Load the texture into your airbrush, preferably a crappy one that you don't care about because it tends to clog them up, and spray a light coat from 6 to 8 inches away. Once you see a fine texture develop, don't spray any more on that area. That's all you need, otherwise it'll start to look soft and will ruin the effect. Once you have the anti-slip applied, use a hairdryer to help speed up the drying process. It will dry out and turn almost white when it's ready for you to start cleaning it up. Then take a toothpick, large paintbrush, and I also use an uh, X-Acto knife to remove excess texture from anywhere that you don't want it. It is super time consuming, but the results are totally worth it. Generally the gaps in between panels and the tops of bolts and smaller features will not have anti-slip applied and so I just try to remove it from those areas. It's generally very really easy to remove uh, with a toothpick or an X-Acto knife like here. Then I'll use some water to clean off the excess anti-slip dust. This will just keep the rest of the model clean and keep anti-slip dust out of the rest of our finishes and super glues and stuff like that. It's kind of tough to tell here, but that's all the white stuff that you see is anti-slip texture. And once we have paint on this, it's going to look absolutely fantastic. Um, you can kind of see a little bit of it right now showing through. Black superglue has recently increased in popularity for applying photo etch since you can see the excess and clean it up effectively. I personally prefer to use Gorilla Gel superglue. It's easier to apply precisely and has a very strong hold and slightly longer cure time so you have time to correctly orient parts. Here I'm using black superglue but I decided to use the gel for most of the rest of the photo etch. When trying to form photo etch to a curved surface, I find it's easiest to start by getting just one end super glued down first. This acts as an anchor point, and from there, you can fold it the rest of the way over with other strategically placed dots of super glue. Some molded on details needed to be removed, and well, I'm not the best with a chisel, so I left some marks in the fuel tanks. These were filled with some Tamiya surface primer, basically thin gray putty, and then sanded down flush with the surface. Gray putty can shrink after a while, but I live in a very dry climate and so it'll dry very quickly and not move much past that. It's also very thin layers. Um, usually the shrinkage occurs in thicker stuff like filling seam lines and stuff like that. So with these parts, I don't expect to see much shrinkage, but I could be uh, wrong. Once everything was cleaned up, I went through with the X-Acto knife to make sure there were no irregularities in the fuel tank shape. Um, an X-Acto knife just helps sculpt it a little bit better in my experience. And then I applied the photo etch straps to the fuel tank itself.
The T14 appears to have a ton of exposed piping and wires and stuff like that, and Tacom seems to have just left them off. I added most on based off of references that I have, and also the trumpeter kit that I initially bought for this project. Um, for some reason, trumpeter has it and Tacom doesn't, and then trumpeter's size is all off and everything like that. So Tacom is still the better kit. You just have to add these little things to it to make it a little bit more accurate. The most noticeable missing feature are these two pipes that run underneath the turret bustle and out the other side. I referenced the trumpeter model and uh, used it to recreate and 3D print a passing replica of the brackets on the real tank. I then used a straight edge, drilled locator holes, glued them in, and ran some vinyl tubing that I keep on hand through it to finish off the component. These files will be available for my patrons and members and also will be sold for a dollar or two on my Colts 3D page, linked in the card now. Moving on to the engine deck, I installed the intake screens with some very small dots of gel superglue. The kit did come with them, but the Voyager set had much better detail and dimensionality to them. The exhausts were a bit of a challenge since there really wasn't anything to reference off of and the inner plumbing was meant to glue into the sheet metal section before installation. With a little bit of fiddling, I think I made it work though. I would recommend gluing the inner section straight to the hull of the kit and then adding this sheet metal section afterwards. It makes it a lot easier. It's not how it's supposed to go together, but you're not going to see much of it anyway, so it's not a huge deal if there's if they're a little bit off off axis or not quite high enough or low enough. So that's what I ended up doing. I, I broke this off and just glued it on separately. The Voyager kit also came with headlight covers and brackets, which required some serious modification to the kit parts. I first clipped off the largest and most obvious sections, and then I finished it off with a sanding stick and a needle file. Lots of dry fitting and testing made sure that the headlight cover fit well. It's a very fiddly process, and I was not able to come up with consistent results between the two headlights. If you're not super comfortable modifying kit parts, and your sanding skills aren't quite up to snuff yet, I would recommend practicing on something else first, as clear plastic is super brittle and hard to work with, and you only get one chance with these lights. For the sheet metal covers, there should be small radii in the bends, and so I used a drill bit shaft to form the curves. I tried to add some wiring, but it didn't go super well. Super glue does not stick to VMS anti-slip very well at all. I would just leave it off. The final thing for this section of the build was the mounts for the slat armor in the back. A separate video will be released soon on making the slat armor and side skirts. The biggest challenge for this part of the build was making sure that the brackets lined up. I used a ruler and a ton of patience to get it properly aligned. Thankfully it's plastic, and so we can fix minor issues once the glue sets. And that's all we have time for today. As always, thank you so much for watching all the way to the end. If you enjoyed this video, please be sure to hit that like button and subscribe if you haven't already. If you want to support the channel and get some pretty neat 3D printable greeblies and maybe some tracks for your next models, go check out my Patreon page. Link is in the description. 
As always, I want to extend a huge thank you to my Patreons and YouTube members. You guys are awesome. Next, we'll be working on the turret of this beast, and I have a metal barrel to suffer through, so be sure to stick around for that.